Good day, everyone. So my name is JD, and I'm still your instructor for Field Study 1. We are now at the Lesson 12. So the Lesson 12 and 13, they are somehow related because we'll be talking about assessments. But I will not be discussing about assessments and evaluation because you should have taken this in your Assessment 1 and Assessment 2 courses in your previous uh, professional education courses because again this is field study so i'm just going to give you a glimpse or an overview or a review on what is these assessments are so episode 12 will be talking about assessment 4 and assessment um, as learning so assessment 4 and assessment as learning this is actually formative assessments okay so let's jump right into our discussion on assessment for learning. So when we talk about assessment for, le for learning, we're talking about three types of assessments that are done. These are assessments that are done before and during the instructions. So now first is the placement assessment. Okay, so a placement is done prior to instructions. So the purpose of this, number one, is to assess the needs of the learners to have the basis in planning for relevant instructions. This is somehow called the assessments of needs or learners assessments of needs. Because one, as teacher, we must know what we want and what the students needs to learn from us. Number two is teachers use this assessment to know what their students are bringing into the learning situation and use this as a starting point for the instruction. Remember that there are different types of learners. So when a learner enters uh, the classroom or enters the class, these different learners have different experiences, okay? So using these placement exams or placement assessments, we can actually determine what are the primary knowledge of these learners based on their experiences, based on the environment that they live in, okay? So uh, this allows us to determine the learning situation of the learners, of the students, and this can serve as a springboard where we can start or where we can launch our teaching instructions. And then followed by third is the result of this assessment, uh, place the students in specific learning groups to facilitate teaching and learning. Um, before we are still doing clustering of learners, we assign learners where they have to be based on their performances on the placement exams. Um, Say, for example, entrance exams on colleges or uh, exams for high school, where in what section you'll be distributed. But then again, in the uh, 21st century education, we try not to be, um, what do you call this, discriminating with what, this, what the learners want to. Like if the learners want to take this program, but they failed to, the, the, it's this, the placement exams. But hopefully this uh this this do not just um affect the learners no uh, placement exams actually helps learners uh, but somehow this also leads learners from their deviate learners from their dream jobs or dream dream uh, programs but then again this is very helpful actually because this helps the teachers also to teach the students that are best at this form of knowledge and then the other one is best in different form of program. So that's number one for assessment for learning, the placement examinations or placement assessments. And then the other one is formative assessments. Formative, since we're talking about formative assessments, this is done during the instruction. So this is where the teachers continuously monitors the student's level of attainment of the learning objectives. So this is continuous, this is progressive. Uh, we don't just check the learner's totality. There's a different assessment for that. But for formative assessment, this is used during the instruction, if we can proceed or reteach a certain topic, the result of this assessment are communicated clearly and promptly to the students to them for them to know their strength, weaknesses, and progress of their learning. Formative assessment is helpful to the teacher and the students as well. To the teacher, one is that they could decide if they're going to reteach the topic based on the results of the formative exam before they proceed to the next topic. 
And for the learners, this could also be helpful because it can help them identify their own strength, weaknesses, and also their progress on their learning. But then again, formative assessments are very important because there are topics, of course, in teaching that are prerequisite to the uh, next uh, topic. So these assessments allow the learners to be ready for the next topic. And then the third one is diagnostic. This is also done during the instructions. This is used to determine students' recurring or persistent difficulties. Uh, it searches for the underlying causes of the student's learning problem that do not respond to the first aid treatment. And it helps formulate a plan to detail the remedial instructions. So these diagnostic exams allows the teachers, of course, to um, provide a remedial instructions if needed for the learners, okay? So we don't just reteach. We also have to do a remedial activity wherein the learners could easily learn from the topic, okay? So that's the assessment for learning. Take note, the placement, the formative, and the diagnostic. And then for assessment as learning, assessment as learning is actually related to for and as learning. This is done for teachers to understand uh, and perform well the role of assessing for and of learning. It requires teachers to undergo training on how to assess learning and be equipped with the following competencies needed in performing their work as assessors. As teachers, we are not just creators of of a plan, we are also implementers, and also we are assessors and evaluators. So we must assess if our learners was able to learn, okay? So take note that in a formative assessment, one must be knowledgeable on the outcomes-based teaching and learning, uh, competency-based teaching, and teaching by objectives. In teaching, in a formative assessment, you must hit the outcome, the intended outcome, the competency, and objectives pertaining to that topic. As teachers, we cannot immediately jump to another topic if our students fail to understand the initial topic because as I have mentioned, there are prerequisite knowledge, prerequisite topics that are relevant to the following. Okay, So it has to be established because it will be assessed at the end called the summative. Okay, So for formative assessment, assessment for and assessment as learning, teachers must ensure that the intended outcome competency objective is attained at the end of the lesson. And so while still the process of teaching, we have to check the learner's understanding and progress. Why did I put while still the process of teaching? Because as I have mentioned, this uh, ass formative assessment is done during and uh, before and during. So um as teachers while at while you're still at the formative stage you should address the uh what we call this the learning gaps or the problems of the learners prior to before it re it reached the summative assessments because if it reached the summative assessment assessment remember that the failure of the student is also the failure of the teacher so that the failure of the entire class is a reflection of the failure of the Teacher. Well, not entirely because, of course, learners has their role on studying their own, but teacher's role is, of, of course, to ignite the passion of the learners to learn and to, of course, acquire knowledge cognitively from the teacher. Okay, so um, it has to be uh, checked and counter-checked during the formative assessments. Now, if the learners fail to understand the prerequisite knowledge and skills, we have to reteach until the, uh, the learners master them. But then again, you must consider all the learners. You are not just going to consider the students that are struggling with the topic, but all the learners. You as a teacher can assess if you're going to proceed or not, depending on the result average performance of the class. Okay. Remember, yes, we want to address, we want to help our students along the way, all of them as much as possible. But then again, there are also students that um, can easily pick up the topic. So you also have to address their needs. Okay, that's also one of the reasons why placement assessment is very important. 
if ever that all the students are in an excellent region or in good performance, all of them could easily catch up. But if you in a diverse classroom, like a, a certain student can actually perform better and then it's a classroom that have both ends of the spectrum that the other has a good performance and then the other one has lapses in their performance, there's a big problem with that. That's why placement assessment is also very important. But again, we are also trying to contextualize things that we're trying to mix these types of learners to promote diversity and of course, promote unity inside the classroom, okay? But then again, you know, reteaching a certain topic, you can do it once, twice, um, but then again, it's up to you as teachers if, if uh, you have to proceed because again, you also have a deadline and you also have a target as a teacher as much as you want to help these students. But these students have to also extend their you know, efforts on reaching this knowledge. So again, formative assessments, this is assessments while the learners are being formed or taught. Uh, that's why it's called formative assessments. So it has to be procedural, okay? And then this is the assessment in the midst of the instruction. So it has to be addressed immediately. Of course, assessment is not just, uh, of course, in your assessment one or assessment two, different types of assessment has been provided, especially in the outcomes-based education. I will not be discussing the different types of assessments already, but I expect that you are already aware on this assessment. We have the authentic assessment, we have the traditional assessments, we have the these different kinds of kinds of assessments, portfolio rather. Okay, so you should be aware of this because assessment has to be differentiated because we have different types of learners and we have to address the needs of all these learners. And it's quite difficult for us teachers to do that. So we cannot actually do one singular activity for everyone uh, repeatedly. We can use different activities from time to time and, of course, promote uh, collaborative activities. There are also, of course, individual activities is still encouraged, but you can use uh, group activities, collaborative activities, and even other section, other classes, uh, relationship activities, like relational activities. You can collaborate with other uh, subject teachers. So formative assessments, as I have mentioned, is done during the instruction. This is very important because this will determine, this has a large impact on the summative assessment, which we will be talking on the next lesson. So that's the assessment for and as learning. Um, it's a very brief topic, but very heavy one. And I want you to have your own reflection on assessment for and assessment as learning as teachers. So should you have any questions, please feel free to message me or comment at the comment section. Thank you very much for listening and God be with you all. Thank you.